What's up guys, my name is Irina and welcome back to my channel where I review everything tech. In today's video I want to do a long-term comparison between the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Google Pixel 4 XL. I've spent a lot of time with both of these phones and so far we've had several updates with the new features on the Google Pixel 4 XL as well as the iPhone 11 Pro Max. A quick disclaimer guys, first of all, of course, these are two completely different operating systems, the iOS and the Android, and in this video I'm not comparing the systems, but instead I compare and sharing my experiences with these phones as a user. And without further ado, let's get started! When it comes to designs of these phones, of course it comes to personal preferences, but I have to admit, these phones definitely have something in common. They look pretty much similar in terms of size. The Pixel 4 XL is a little taller and slimmer. Both phones have matte glass backs. We have a matte aluminum frame on the Pixel and glossy stainless steel frame on the iPhone. And when it comes to weight, the iPhone 11 Pro Max feels noticeably heavier. To be more precise, as you can see, it's 193 grams for the Pixel 4 XL and 232 grams for the 11 Pro Max. And let's talk about the displays of these phones. Both of them have pretty thick bezels. The Pixel 4 XL has much smaller side bezels than the 11 Pro Max, but when it comes to upper and bottom bezels, they look smaller on the 11 Pro Max, even with the notch. And just in case you're wondering about the screen to body ratios of these phones, it's around 84% on the 11 Pro Max and 82% on the Pixel 4 XL. We have a 6.3 inch OLED display on the Google Pixel 4 XL and 6.5 inch OLED display on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. This slight difference in display size doesn't actually affect your viewing experience on the Pixel 4 XL when, say, you're scrolling through your Instagram feed or YouTube, you still get pretty much the same amount of information on these displays. And when it comes to one of the main display features, you get the True Tone on the 11 Pro Max and the Ambient EQ on the Pixel 4 XL. The features that are both constantly adjusting the white balance to the light around you. The whole idea of these features is to provide you accurate colors regardless of the ambient lighting. The camera usually doesn't pick up on these changes and nuances in colors, however, when you enable the True Tone it makes colors look much warmer, hence slightly yellowish on the display of the 11 Pro Max, while the ambient EQ makes this difference more subtle on the Pixel 4 XL. So, to me, it looks like the Pixel 4 XL provides you more realistic paper white colors, while the 11 Pro Max always makes whites look slightly yellowish on its display. So, it's really up to preferences, guys, but you can always disable the True Tone and Ambient EQ features if you're not a fan of them, so I'm pretty sure that you will adjust these displays up to your taste. Speaking of other display features, both of these phones have night modes, it's called Night Shift on the 11 Pro Max and Night Light on the Pixel 4 XL. Both of them make display colors look much warmer and more comfortable for your eyes. And of course, both of these phones have dark modes, which I think every other smartphone has these days. The good thing is that you can schedule the dark mode on the 11 Pro Max and after the latest update you can also schedule the dark theme on the Pixel 4 XL. And when it comes to other display features on the Pixel 4 XL, you can also enable the invert colors mode and grayscale mode. When it comes to the brightness of these displays, I have to admit the 11 Pro Max is a clear winner here. This is how these displays look at 50% brightness. And this is how they compare when you put them at the max brightness. This difference is pretty noticeable to the naked eye, but this difference becomes even more obvious when I use a light meter. But when it comes to using the Pixel 4 XL on a daily basis, mostly indoors, I've honestly never experienced any inconvenience or viewing problems. But I have to admit that when I use my Pixel 4 XL outdoors, it honestly could be better in terms of brightness. However, it's important to mention that the Pixel 4 XL has the advantage of having a 90Hz refresh rate capable display, which makes all the swipes feel instant and very smooth. I know that many people don't care about it, but I do, so I really hope the next generation iPhones will have this feature too, but for now, I'm enjoying it on my Pixel 4 XL. And next, let's talk about biometrics and security features. Both of these phones have the face unlock and neither of them has a fingerprint sensor. Speaking of face unlock, the 11 Pro Max and the Pixel 4 XL have similar technologies. They are using infrared cameras and dot projectors to create a unique depth map of your face, which is amazing because this type of face unlock is considered to 
be the most secure at the moment, since it can be tricked with a photo or a video. And aside from that, the Pixel 4 XL also has a motion sensing radar that detects that you're reaching for the phone and starts preparing the system to scan your face, making the face unlock process faster. And when it comes to which phone has a faster face unlock, let's do a quick test together and see who's the winner. Let's try the most popular scenario when you're lifting your phone up to your face. I'm gonna do several takes to make this test as fair as possible. Let's switch phones. Looks like the Face ID on the 11 Pro Max is always a little faster. But I have a suspicion that there is a chance the lock animation is longer on the Pixel 4 XL. And besides, we should not forget about the option called Skip Lock Screen on the Pixel 4 XL that lets you skip the swipe up when you unlock your phone. So let's see how these phones compare now. And now, looks like the face unlock works a little faster on the Pixel 4 XL. So guys, as you can see, these phones are pretty much equal in terms of speed when it comes to the face unlock. The only drawback for me about the face unlock on the Pixel 4 XL is that you can unlock it with closed eyes, which for me personally reduces this feeling of security. Google said that it's been working on it, but it's been about 5 months now and I'm still waiting for this. Also, it's important to note that at the moment you get fewer apps that support the face unlock on the Pixel 4 XL when compared to the 11 Pro Max. For instance, speaking of the apps I personally use, right now both the Bank of America as well as the Credit Karma app let you sign in with the Face ID on both phones, while my PayPal and Android Lingon app only work on the iPhone. So, apparently it's gonna take a while until other developers add support, but the good news is that this list of apps that support the face unlock is gradually getting bigger on the Pixel 4 XL. When it comes to other security features, no surprises here, the Pixel 4 XL is much more customizable. So, as I previously said, you can enable option called Skip Lock Screen that lets you skip the swipe up when you unlock your phone. And you also have the Smart Lock feature on the Pixel 4 XL, for instance, if you're home and this constant unlocking really bothers you. Next, let's talk about the battery of these phones. We have 3700 mAh on the Pixel 4 XL and 3969 mAh on the 11 Pro Max. Both of these phones come with 18 watt power adapters, USB-C, lightning connector, and when it comes to charging time, let's see. It takes about 1 hour and 50 minutes to fully charge the iPhone 11 Pro Max and, well, almost 2 hours to fully charge the Pixel 4 XL. So, there is no dramatic difference in this field. By the way, both of these phones support wireless charging. However, neither of these phones has the reverse wireless charging. And let's talk about the battery lives. Both of these phones are able to last me through the day with moderate use. On average, I have about 30% left by the end of the day on the Pixel 4 XL and about 60% on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And even when the display on the Pixel 4 XL is set to 60Hz, I still get less screen on time when compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So when it comes to the battery life, the 11 Pro Max will last you longer. But as I said, both of these phones are able to last you through the day. Speaking of the new features that we've got after the last update on the Pixel 4 XL, you can now pause and resume playing with a hand gesture. I remember when I just got this phone and tried this new gesture feature on my Pixel 4 XL for the first time, my first thought was, that's cool, and the second thought was, what about the plain pause? So finally it's here and I never missed the opportunity to use it, since it's very easy and helpful. You just move your hand toward the phone like this and the music stops, and you move it again and it starts playing. And now let's talk about the cameras of these phones and I guess one of the main reasons why you'd probably end up choosing between these two phones. Yes, the cameras on these phones are incredible. We have a triple camera on the 11 Pro Max and a dual camera on the Pixel 4 XL. 
And yes, the iPhone 11 Pro Max has the advantage of having the ultra wide camera, but first of all, I think you should ask yourself if you're really gonna use it on a daily basis. If you ask me, I don't use the ultra wide camera on my 11 Pro Max very often, even though I'm a big fan of it. Mostly, I use it in situations when I need to take a photo in a very small, secluded area, or when the subject of a photo is too high to be fully captured, or when I'm just in a super creative mood. But honestly, about 70% of all the photos I take are shot on the main camera. Let's talk about the camera modes we get on these phones. Aside from the basic ones, such as time-lapse, slow-mo, video, photo, portrait and panorama, the Pixel 4 XL also has Photosphere that creates 360-degree photos, playground where you could have fun with AR stickers and different characters, and lens that helps you identify objects, find products on the internet and so much much more. Both of these phones have the night modes. For me, it's easier to use the night mode on the 11 Pro Max, since it's automatic. On the Pixel 4 XL, you have to toggle between the modes, but eventually both of these phones produce incredible night shots. And when it comes to the Pixel 4 XL, you also get the astrophotography mode. I already have many camera comparison videos on my channel featuring the 11 Pro Max and the Pixel 4 XL. Don't forget to check them out, I think the side-by-side examples will speak for themselves. Next, let's talk about the speakers of these phones. We have stereo speakers on the Pixel 4 XL as well as on the 11 Pro Max. They both have in-display speakers at the top and also here at the bottom on the right. The speakers on the Pixel 4 XL seem to be a little louder to me. However, when it comes to the sound quality, it's pretty good on both of these phones. By the way, when it comes to sound features, I like the feature called Now Playing on the Pixel 4 XL. It identifies the songs playing around at the moment and you can see it on your lock screen. So it's like this substitute for Shazam, but you don't even have to open it up. I think I could compare these two phones for hours, but it's time to wrap up this video. I don't want to make it too long. When I think about these two phones, I feel like I have more fun and get more helpful and interesting features with the Google Pixel 4 XL. And when it comes to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it's more simple, but it feels like a loyal, powerful tool. It's like my mini computer that gives me pretty much everything I need. Guys, which phone would you pick and why? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next one.